we're back. Sorry about that. So I had to take an emergency phone call from my wife who forgot how to get downstairs in her building. And I wish I was joking, but it's basically that's true. She was going to a restaurant in her building and didn't know how to get there in the rain. walk now. Man, I gotta come down here later with my kids, too. There's your screenshot. Very wet. All right, let's make our way this way and see what else we can find. I haven't taken you guys to Yoshinoya in a while, have I? The Paris attacks. You know, it's interesting you mentioned the Paris attacks. I was watching uh, a BBC documentary on the Paris attacks, but it, it, it was dealing with the Charlie Hedbo case first. Uh, not the more recent ones. The boys will not be attending a boarding school. They'll be attending a private school that actually has a boarding option, but we're going to keep them day school. I don't want, I, I, I just can't, I'm not ready to say goodbye to my kids yet. I don't want to send them to boarding school. There's a brilliant YouTube video on the Paris attacks where a father tries to teach his son about the Paris attacks. His son was scared about terrorism in Paris. But the father explained how, how love was more powerful than hate. And it was actually a Japanese immigrant to um, France. And he explained to his son, and it pretty much melted the hearts of all of France. That's on YouTube. If you haven't seen that video, oh my god, I strongly recommend watching that. A Japanese fa uh, French father explains terrorist attacks to his son. And that's on YouTube. Um, it is a must-watch video. It's even one to watch with your kids. You know what? I'll tweet a link to that. If you follow me on Twitter, Penguin6, I'm gonna, I'll find that video and tweet it out. I'm gonna do that right now, actually. Okay, I'm in the, I'm in the dry part now. Okay, let's see where my YouTube is. Uh, French father, French father, it's the first thing you get, French father explains terror attacks. There it is, French father explains terror attacks. And this is an amazing video. If you have not watched this, I strongly recommend watching this video, uh, especially if you're watching stuff about the terror attacks in France. It's just a, a dad trying to assuage his son of the fears that he had in the way best possible without making it fear. It is a tearjerker, Flames, yeah. Definitely worth watching it. What is the building with the round windows? This is the Connect 4 building. The makers of Connect 4 uh, bought a building in Hong Kong and built, oh, I'm sorry, this is actually Jardine's house. Jardine's group is one of the largest import-export shipping companies in Hong Kong. The Jardine's group has a revenue of about 40 billion US a year. Um, it's Noble House. You remember the book Noble House by James Clavell? It was based on the Jardine's group. So, but yeah, we all call it the Connect 40 building. Because I would just love to play Connect 4 down the side of that building. It's pouring rain, it is lunch hour. What do you think? Is there gonna be a line at Shake Shack? Connect four was working. She was bad. Which one? What? Need my life, well then come and live here. Come move to Hong Kong. Round trip airfare to Hong Kong is like 500 bucks. 
600 bucks. Round trip. I mean, you could be here tomorrow. Yeah. It's our post office. They're actually tearing this building down. Yeah, for most major destinations. I think the cheapest we found was 360 from California uh, coming over this fall. 360 round trip. I mean, crazy. I could go to Shake Shack. Do they play soccer? My kids play soccer. There is a premier league here in Hong Kong. They do have a national team, the Hong Kong national team. Um, but uh, they, uh, they're not very good. I think a few of the players here play professionally. Many play in China. Some play other places. Like they'll play for like the second division side in England or third division side. I think there's a guy playing in the third, second division of England right now. Wish I could travel, but so expensive. Do you have like a college roommate who happens to have a credit card? You could borrow it and just take their card and come to visit. There are a lot of ways to travel very cheap. You don't have to. You don't have to go first class all the time, and it's actually very cheap to get to Hong Kong. I mean, cheaper than an iPad, yeah? There are often bargain fares to get you to Hong Kong, and you can come over and take it out. Oh, I'm gonna be in DC, but if I go to New York, maybe we'll scope. The problem in the US is that the bandwidth is so crap. Oh, we need to get a condom. So we're gonna get a condom here. Let me show you. This is an umbrella condom. Protected. So we've uh, got our umbrella. This way our umbrella doesn't drip water all over the floor. Where are the overweight people? Are there any? Um, no. <laughs> well, yes. Actually, uh, the definition of overweight for Asians is actually different than for Caucasians. So there are actually a number of what we would consider overweight Asians. But um, uh, by American standards, we don't have obese people. I mean, not that like obscene obesity. China actually has a major problem with overweight people now. DC scopes, eh, maybe. Uh, I think after the United States, China has the highest, China has like the highest number of overweight people. I mean, they've got like 300 million people who are overweight. I mean, that's more than the population of the U.S. almost. But, uh, and it, it is a problem because, you know, diabetes and high blood pressure are very significant problems in China. Um, the diet in China is not actually the most healthy. Uh, the diet here in Hong Kong is way too high in sodium. And as a result, high blood pressure, hypertension are very, very high in Hong Kong. Uh, the stressful nature of Hong Kong and the diet doesn't really help. There is so much salt. Um, I mean, the soy sauce they sell here is just absolutely, I mean, one tablespoon of the soy sauce in Hong Kong is your like recommended daily allowance of sodium. It's that bad. What the hell is this thing that just popped up? A lot of news. So this is like a pop-up. Sleep pop-up stores pop up here all the time. Oh god, is this for like Jurassic Park or something? Uh, I don't know if there's much MSG. Maybe some. But just the way it's cooked, you know, sitting, you know, simmering broth with beef in it, you know, it's gonna leach out salt. We're gonna have a very salty broth after a while. Oh, that's a big line. I just watched a YouTube video, How to Make the Ratatouille from the movie Ratatouille. It was pretty cool. i to try it. I need to get a mandolin or whatever, those little things that cut stuff. I wanted to make homemade potato chips. The Hong Kong Stock Exchange is no more. It is all digital. The stock exchange trading floor was shuttered uh, literally about six months ago. The last paper traders finished up things. They didn't really promote Solo big time here, not as much as, say, oh, what was the other big movie that came out recently? Avengers. Avengers was promoted more than Solo, I would say. Um,
HSBC, actually, I have three bank accounts with HSBC. I have one here in Hong Kong, one in the United States, and one in London. So I have three HSB bank accounts, so I'm actually not that disaffected with them. Um, I'm a premier customer, though, so I get a bit more. Oh, wow, they're going to bring out like an animatronic dinosaur. Check it out. I think there's a dinosaur in there. I think it's like some like Lego. This has got to, this has got to go on my Instagram here. Uh, yeah, my father, uh, my father does paleontology work, so he actually, he actually found a T. Rex. If you ever go to the Baltimore Science Museum, there is a T. Rex known as Pex Rex, and my father was part of the paleontology team that located and unearthed Pex Rex. Oh, Tad the T-Rex. Oh, okay, so it is a real T-Rex they're bringing out. Do you think they're lined up? Do you think there's a line? On a crap day like today, do you think there's a line? And the answer is... Um, there's no line. There is a line. Jesus. I'm not waiting in line. Ugh. The line goes on the inside. And we're going back down. So... There's a Shake Shack near a Hallberg. Yeah, well, that's that just opened May 1st, so it's still it's still pretty popular. I can't go. It's 30 minute wait, um, judging by the line that I could see in the door. Oh, thunder! It was like thunder, lightning. Everything was exciting. You better knock on wood. Maybe. Have I gotten successfully shake shot? About three or four times I've taken my kids there. God, it's raining a lot. Look at that. They're building a coffer dam here with sandbags. Hey, Kazakhstan. How's it going? You can get a brand new credit card and come to China. Cool. That'll work. There are too many pretty women here. Mathematically, there are 1,000 women for every 750 single men. And many of the men prefer to date mainland Chinese women rather than the local girls. So it's, uh, it's pretty rough on the local women. So there's a back door to Shake Shack. I didn't know that. Do, 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 do. Do, do. Yeah, it's great odds. And I should mention if your charm, guile, and wit can't attract the ladies, well, <laughs> prostitution is legal here, so your wallet can also help you. <laughs> November restaurant suggestions here three years ago. Well, I eat pretty weird stuff. Kau Ki is always a favorite. K-A-U-K-E-E, -E. that's a noodle place. Chimcha Ki, that's where I ate earlier today. Um, 3 a.m. dim sum in Kennedy Town. I go to 3 a.m. dim sum a lot. This is the uh, pocket knife shop. I love these pocket knives. So we have a three-story Apple store. So that's Apple, the basement's Apple, and then this level is Apple. It's three levels of Apple. But mental. I need to buy one of these books here. These are books about old Hong Kong. Oh, this is like oh, noodles. Yes, gun, there are no guns allowed in Hong Kong. Does it seem like a communist country? No, not communist per se, but the government is very much beholden to Beijing. So the government is getting more and more mm, strident, I guess would be the word, less and less responsive to the people. Um, you don't want to say the word authoritarian, but uh, it, it, it's kind of like the people here are starting to feel like they have no impact on their future. And they're lead, leading to a, a disillusioned youth who will never be able to afford to buy a house, who feel a huge disconnect from the government, who feel they are part of a culture that's jumbo restaurant. I don't go there very often. It's just for tourists. Um, 
they don't they, they, they feel they're part of the Hong Kong culture but the Hong Kong government doesn't embrace that culture they want to become more mainland Chinese which they kind of don't really like so there's an alienated youth here uh, in response to the government's sort of uh, whatever the government's intransigence I tried to think of the one thing that would never harm me the one thing from my childhood that would never cause anybody pain Mr. Stapoff. The Stapoff Marshmallow Land. How's the French burger place? Oh, it's packed too. God, nowhere can I get a burger. Burgers everywhere are sold out. Uh, let's go find something else. Let's go ride the escalator, yeah? Do, 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 do. So this is the French hamburger place, which is actually pretty good. I just haven't been here in a while. Big Fernand. Maybe I should order a Big Fernand delivered. So this is the airport express station down here, and this is actually where you check in for your flight. Sushi train's down a bit. So you come here and you drop off your luggage. So you see those people, they've got their luggage. You drop your luggage off here and you get your boarding pass here. Then you get on a train and go to the airport and you get to the airport 25 minutes later. So you only have to be here in central Hong Kong 90 minutes before your flight. Yep. Be here 90 minutes before your flight, take the train to the airport, make your way to the gate, and then it's boarding. None of this three hours before your flight crap that goes on in America. Yeah, 90 minutes before your flight, you check in here. I mean, God, well, I miss that. Yeah, you can check off but one airline. There, there's one flight to the U.S. that has recently uh, been disallowed to be checked in. And we're not sure why, but I think there might have been some chatter. There was an, an intelligence update, and they, they prohibited check-ins for one or two American flights at this airport. Wish you could travel, what's stopping you? Round trip airfare to Hong Kong is like 500, 600 bucks US. Dude, that's like flying to California. 500, 600 US. You get a cheap hotel or get an Airbnb place for a week. You could be here easily. Just, just gotta do it. You just gotta do it. But if you're coming over, I'd actually recommend do a couple things. You know, come to Hong Kong, then maybe go to Bangkok. Is there terrorism here? Are you kidding me? No. Are there celebrities here? Yeah, tons of them. Uh, Western celebrities come here. I live in the mid-levels, up halfway up. Okay, so I'm going to show you something insane right now, all right? We're going to walk through this, this over here, and I'm going to be... People are selling condominiums. They are selling flats. They are selling apartment buildings in new construction, trying to reach anyone mainland tourists. They sell them on the streets. These are multi-million dollar apartments. All these guys you see standing here with brochures are trying to sell you houses. Yep, because this pathway connects this part of town over to the mainland ferry pier. And so over here, these are all real estate agents. All these real estate agents are trying to sell houses. Yeah? Mid-levels are midway up the peak, the peak being the tallest mountain on Hong Kong Island. I live midway, mid-levels of the peak. So these guys, see they're waving these brochures. There is a new apartment building and they're all trying to sell they're all trying to sell to all the mainland tourists who are coming in off the ferries. Why are the prices so high? Because the people that buy them won't actually live in them. They're going to just buy them for investments. There are people from China looking to hide their dirty money. So they come down here and they buy property for, you know, whatever. My 1,000 square foot apartment, 1,000 square foot apartment is 4 million US dollars to buy. To buy my house is 4 million US. And I should note, I'd have to put 40% down, 1.6 million in cash. Big bubble, you know, it's hard to say it's a bubble because it's just, there, as long as China has so much disposable income, they need a place to invest it. And this is the most readily visible. Same things goes on in London and New York and other places where mainland Chinese try to hide their money. So. It's hard to say it's a bubble. It's not based on any localized property demands. It's not like there are more people wanting to buy houses in Hong Kong. It's just a very 
crude market manipulation responding to an external influx of cash. I do live here in Hong Kong. I've lived here about eight years. This is my home, but I'm moving. In about a month, I'm moving back to the United States so my kids can pursue uh, education in the United States. Some nice Asian girls. Dude, open your eyes. Are you kidding me? We're in Hong Kong. They're everywhere. We'll do okay. Um, I was going to go over... Shoot. So I was going to go over to the... Uh, sushi train, but I think it's pretty crazy. I was going to call you. I know lots of people in China looking to spend money on something. So that's the Macau Ferry Terminal, that gray building over there. That's where you get a ferry to mainland China or to Macau. Uh, I was thinking of going to Macau because they have a Dairy Queen, and I had this like craving for dilly bars. And I was like, I'm going to make a road trip to Macau to get a box of dilly bars. Education in China is way better than American education. Always, all right? I mean, they learn the ABCs and 1, 2, 3s pretty good, but they don't learn how to be creative. In fact, many Chinese, uh, they come to the United States and they just, they flounder. Uh, this is Hong Kong. There's an amazing, absolutely amazing article in New York Magazine, ran about five years ago, and it was called... Um, what ha it, it, just type Asian Americans New York Magazine and it's basically the subtitle is what happens to Asian Americans when the testing stops and it's it's about how the meritocracy of high test scores are not delivering the success that many of Asians suspected it would they're like we scored high on the test we're gonna get into the good schools how come we're not making any headway in the business world. And of course, you know, there's always some sort of subtle racism things, but there's other issues like lack of leadership, lack of creativity, etc., that they were never trained for. And uh, it's an amazing article written by an Asian guy. He went around interviewing a number of Asian guys and girls and talking about how difficult the path is. And it's very similar to uh, what's happening here. Does the government help the poor? About half of the government, half the people in Hong Kong live in public or subsidized housing. Um, and the rent is a few hundred U.S. dollars. Health care is also free here. Health care is paid for by the government. So it's another big expense off your ballot. They take care of the handicap. You know, they make some strides, but not everything. So like, you know, like a lot of the crosswalks will have visually impaired signals, you know, for the, for the blind so they can hear how to go. And there are ramps everywhere. But then there's some places, like, I remember we went to one building, and you would go down an escalator, and then there'd be three steps at the bottom of the escalator. It's like, okay, so you're handicapped. You come down the escalator, and then you're confronted with, like, three steps. It's like, guys, come on. So, you know, they try, but this is not really the best place in the world to be handicapped. Well, this is an interesting article, you know. This kid went to, to, bed, to Stoy Vesson High School, which is pretty much one of the best schools in New York City, filled with Asians, of course, because they scored very well on tests. But the kid realized, he's like, how is it that these other kids who are the captain of the soccer team, the cheerleader, the parent student government, how is it that they get good grades and they're still able to be creative and speak well and all this? So. Uh, I've actually already had noodles, so I was actually more, more of this hype was just trying to burn off the first lunch so we can go find a second lunch. Moving in about a month. Skip school nine. Tempted at Jaywa. I'm gonna Jaywa. Lights changing. Okay, so this is Choiwa. All right. You know, in the United States, you have like Denny's. Okay. This is the Denny's of Hong Kong food. I'm moving to the United States in July.
this is really good food. Mmm, pineapple buns. <gasps> Those are so good. Those are so good. Oh, durian pineapple buns. I'm not eating that. Mexican custard buns. Oh, oh. must pass the bakery. God, it got really hot. Yeah, really hot, really quick. Um, my kids have been accepted to a very good private school in the United States. In fact, one of the best private schools in the country. So, well, actually, if you go to Shenzhen, China, it's even more modern than here. Shenzhen is a city of about 13 million people. It's where your iPhone was made. And it's just across the border from Hong Kong. In 1980, it was a small town of about 250,000 people. Now there's about 15 million. And everything, everything has been built basically in the last 20 or 30 years. So it's an incredibly modern city with big freeways and subway systems and giant buildings and glass and steel. Uh, and a lot of cities in China have been built up very much like that. I think, I think that's what you probably would find the most shocking. In fact, oh, bakery. Hang on a second. Let's take a look. Tuna fish. I'll miss my spokes too. I'm gonna draw it here. <sighs> well, that's part of the problem is the culture here is not the culture of American or UK universities where our kid will eventually study one day. And so we have had long talks with other families and educators that there is an acclimation process to Hong Kong kids going to American universities that sometimes doesn't go very well. So we're interested in dealing with that acclimation issue now at an earlier age, such that by the time they get to university, they're more ready for it. You have those bakeries in California. That's a reason to go to California. Most Chinatowns have those bakeries. New DC Chinatown does not, which is a shame. And that's the thing, Hong Kong has frickin' bakeries everywhere. I mean, every block there's a bakery. You go to the U.S. and it's just like nothing. It's just awful. Can U.S. tourists go to mainland China without a visa? No. However, you can go to Shenzhen, China with what's, what's called a visa on arrival, a five-day visa, uh, just for Shenzhen. But um, it costs the same as a mainland Chinese visa. You might as well just get a real visa, you know? Why well, get a five-day visa? Oh. They speak the language is English. English is the official language of Hong Kong, as is Chinese. I don't speak Cantonese, only a few words to tell my taxi cab where to go. In fact, there's supposed to be, I think there's two bakeries down here I'm blocking bots today. Oh, I think this is poop cake. I haven't had poop cake in a while for my kids. Cake, 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 cake. Mango mousse with chocolate cake. They speak Cantonese here. A mandarin's growing. Chocolate Oreo cake. Fruity black forest cake. Fruit rainbow cake. More fruit rainbow cake. Dad cake. What the hell's that? Mixed fruit cake for dad? Last time I had a sponge cake uh, this morning for breakfast. Mixed fruit cake. Was it dad's day coming up or something? It must be father's day or something. Cake ever. 60k to go to gun school. Yeah, my son's school is not much cheaper than that either. It's Father's Day coming up. Nobody tells me these things. My kids will forget. My wife will forget. <sighs> Look at these socks. Socks, 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 socks. My cousin makes socks. You guys ever need socks? Tell me. My cousin has a sock factory in China. I can get you socks really cheap. I can get like, and stockings too, yeah? I can, my, my wife, we go up to our cousin's house. She walks out with like, I don't know, like a hundred pairs of like pantyhose stockings. She like, you know, for the rest of her, for like the year, basically disposable. Do you need to get cash out of the ATM? No, I've got some. How much are the socks? I don't know how much they cost. He's actually migrating. He started making like tactical socks for like SWAT teams and stuff. 
He even makes bulletproof vests. They're very industrious, my cousins in China. Okay, this is the noodle guy. We walked up this street earlier, so we're going to walk up this street this time. Gonna get hit by a meter uh, Rent, about 8,500 US dollars. Let me know, please. Well, send me a Twitter, Penguin6, uh, if you want to know more about socks. I can find a catalog of what they sell. They sell bulk socks. Ever see a Lamborghini? Uh, you mean this hour, or today, or this week, or this month? Uh, pretty much yes to all of those. Um, there are hundreds of Lamborghinis and Ferraris. In fact, there's a couple in my building. Um, I see, well, how often do you see a Tesla in your town? I probably see a Lamborghini as frequently, if not more so. Um, I'm a dad, I do dad stuff, wife's a banker. Uh, but Lamborghinis and Ferraris and Aston Martins, I saw two Aston Martins yesterday. Um, yeah, 8,500 US. Uh, per month in rent. Probably about 9,000 with utilities. Reminds me, i got to pay the utility bill. That's cheap. The average family in my son's international is spending about 11,500 U.S. per month. 11,500 U.S. per month on rent. That's the average family in my son's international school. So we get by pretty cheap, yeah? 8,500? That's a bargain. How do you afford that? You make enough money? pretty easily yeah I mean, you try not to pay more than a third of your income on rent or housing that's sort of a general guideline around the world and I think we're below that Whew. you see Tesla's and Lamborghini's well, yeah LA has a lot so we're at the butchers now this is the wet market and then this is the fish man and then down here is the pig head. Uh, I'm a dad. I do dad stuff. I mine bitcoins and do some trading. I write apps every now and then. I used to be a lawyer, but I don't do that anymore. Hey, Turkey. Yeah, there's about 10,000 Teslas here in Hong Kong. About 10,000 Teslas. I'm going to go back this way. Some pretty girl has to like pull up her skirt so it doesn't get all wet. You are in China. You are on. You're in the central markets, the central wet markets of. I mean, I used to be a lawyer. Yeah. Well, technically, I still am a lawyer. I just don't practice. Uh, the Bitcoin machine is in Canada because electricity is cheaper there. I sent it off to Canada to mine bitcoins over there. pizza okay Shanghai pan fried buns Korean tacos pizza fish and chips what should my second lunch be do we have any anybody screaming for something specific this is my Bitcoin uh, my Bitcoin machine makes a profit so this is a famous French toast place I need to eat here before I leave I didn't learn Chinese. Don't need to. English is the official language of Hong Kong, so you can get by just fine speaking nothing but English. Everything's in English and Chinese. You guys are all pushing the fish and chips today. How do you do so well? Buy low, sell high. Listen, in a market as volatile as cryptocurrencies, if you sit and spend a couple hours a day, you can make a profit. You know what you're doing. Buy low, sell high. Repeat. I'd love to stay in Hong Kong. We really would. I mean, this is a place where we, we feel we belong here. It's just that our sons, we, we, we have to do everything you can for your sons, your kids. And we have an opportunity before us that, well, my wife and I didn't have when we were kids, an opportunity to really push our kids to a higher level such that, you know, it should be easier, better later in life. How do you know when it's low? You do what's called moving average trading. I encourage you to Google that. Trading based on moving averages. When 
prices go above the moving average or below, you are triggers and use the moving average as a trigger. You won't get the full profit, but you'll get a pretty good one. Watermelon kids. This is a New York style pizzeria here. You see how crowded it is. It's moderately crowded. But I don't have very good pizza out right now. I don't know who's going to show you Hong Kong now. What to do, what to do. Let's get those umbrellas. I'll tell you what. I think we're just going to gall it. I'm going to go do something. I'm not going to eat. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this hike around Hong Kong. Uh, I'm not sure what time it is. Probably a little bit after 1 o'clock or so. Uh, the thing about the fish and chips is I usually call it in early so I don't have to wait. And uh, it's kind of busy. Let me see what time it is. Because the kids come over at 12.45. And he has his lunch rush at 12.45. Let me check what time it is. Yeah, see, it's 12.40. So he's going he's to get the lunch rush in like a minute. And it's going to be insane. Uh, the city. We just went through the market. Anyway, guys, uh, follow me. We'll, maybe we'll get fish and chips tomorrow. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll talk to you all very, very soon.